What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna to talk about a couple of things to look for when wanting to get into VR or AR as a job. So I've been doing a lot of things lately and one of those things is I've been interviewing a lot of VR and AR and also indie game developers, also people that have and are familiar with web development and getting a job with VR or AR. I've been doing this at a company called FS Studio which I'm currently heading and leading the head of R&D with Eggman Reality and Virtual Reality. So I've been doing a lot of interviews. So I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that I'm looking for We're interviewing people for those jobs. So some of these things are things that I'm looking for, things that I know other people are asking for. So the thing that I recommend that you do is you gotta keep simple, right? We're gonna start from the, from the basics and that is, if you want to become an augmented reality or virtual reality development, what type of things do you need to learn? The first one is you gotta choose between Mac OS or Windows. There are advantages and disadvantages of using one versus the other. If we're talking about augmented reality, obviously you're gonna need, if you want to target iOS, you're gonna need a Mac OS computer. And if you want to target more VR, you might need just more on the VR side, you're gonna need a Windows computer. So. What I found out is if you use a Windows computer with VR, you're gonna have a lot more features that are supported with Windows that it is going to be supported with Mac OS. The reason for that is because some of these features, such as if you're using a Meta device, the Oculus Link, that link that allows you to connect your PC to your device, is going to allow you to troubleshoot and run things in Unity, versus if you're not using that feature and you have to deploy every single time. But if you have Windows and you wanna target iOS, then you might need a Mac OS you know, operating system as well. So advantages and disadvantages between the two. The next thing is you need to start simple, right? I would recommend, you know, if you have an iPhone device to use iPhone if, you know, with AR Core, make sure you get an iPhone with AR Core. It doesn't need to be the latest and greatest iPhone device. And if you wanna use something in Android, you can use a Google Pixel. That's what I ended up using when I was learning AR early on, and something that supports AR Core, right? So AR Core is going to be for Android devices, and then you're gonna have AR Kit, which is going to be for iOS devices, and that's going to cover most of the things in augmented reality. But if you want to do VR, I recommend you know getting a device that is going to be either a MetaQuest 1, a MetaQuest 2, or you can also get a MetaQuest Pro, which I don't recommend you to get it right away, because if you're learning, I would you know keep the basics, keep the cost down, where we wanna start simple. We wanna start with a mobile device because it's gonna be really easy to test versus having to set up all these different things for you know a mixed reality device. So starting simple is really big. Learning Unreal or Unity are going to be kind of like the biggest players. They are game engines, but now these game engines have so many different features available. Don't get too you know, derailed into, okay, what things can I use in Unreal? versus Unity, oh, I'm gonna pick this one because my friends are telling me that this engine works better than this other engine. At the end of the day is what works for you. What do you wanna use? What do you get passionate about? And that's what I tell people, just prototype for a week on Unreal or maybe more, and then you do your Unity on the next week. I think, you know, making sure that you have the best view of both engines are gonna allow you to, you know, pick one. There are benefits of using some you know, engines versus others. So make sure that you go through that process. The next one is gonna be more for developers. So if you are a developer today and you want to get into XR, what kind of programming languages do you need to use? And learn. So one that I recommend is C++. I use C++ in my earlier career in college and also when I went to university. There were a lot of things that I needed to do with C++. I'm not an expert in C++, but I learned about it. I know some of the concepts. And then if you're using Unity, you're gonna need something like C Sharp. I really love C Sharp, so I really recommend that you understand the basics, such as object-oriented programming, different data types, different you know things that you can do in, in those languages to be able to educate yourself with those. So the next thing is going to be more for, like if you don't want to really code anything and and you want to start with visual scripting, it's gonna be, you know, this is gonna be big, right? Learning visual scripting in Unreal, they have something called Blueprint. And that's basically kind of like a node-based system where you can drag and drop behaviors, you can add conditionals, you can add components. Basically, it allows you to create an application or a game without having to code a single thing. 
In my in my experience, I think that single thing, like only doing visual scripting and uh, programming, is really it keeps it really limited. And I think understanding programming first and then going to visual scripting, it's going to make you a much better creator. And if you're using Unity, they also have visual scripting. I think they have something called Bolt, which is now part of Unity. And then there's also visual scripting, you know, that is part of Unity that you can now use. You can also use Game Maker. There's a lot of different assets that are available in the asset store in order for you to do that. The other thing is learning design patterns. Again, this is gonna apply for more of a developer role, but understanding design patterns is gonna help you because at the beginning we might have, you know, a spaghetti code, which we have behaviors in here and here, but there's really not a common structure to the code that you're building. So learning design patterns is gonna make you take your application or your game to the next level, which means if you're working on your own, I think it might be okay. But even if you're working on your own and you're structuring your code that you can scale it, I think understanding design patterns and implementing some of these patterns are gonna help you long-term, such as design patterns, such as the factory, observer, command, singleton pattern, which is commonly used in Unity a state pattern and also an MVP, which is the model view presenter. There's also MVC, which is model view controller. So these patterns allow you to create better code and more maintainable code and testable code. So just make sure that you understand how those works. The next one, it's more something that I do all the time and, and I wanna see in a lot of people that I'm interviewing, and that is I want you to prototype with multiple different SDKs. And when I say an SDK, I'm thinking about, so if you're using Unreal, and the Oculus integration is available for Unreal, go ahead and test it. See what works, what kind of components are available. Uh, try to break it, try to see how you, know, you can extend it. Maybe you want to try the Interaction SDK that just came out a few months ago with Unity, or you want to try the Movement SDK, which I just announced it, and you wanna see how it works. I think at the end of the day, understanding these various tools that are available in game engines are gonna make you a better developer, a better creator, because you're gonna know in your head, okay, oh, I try MRTK, which is the Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit, and it has all these capabilities. And then I try the XR Toolkit for Unity, but it didn't have this other capability. Well, now you, you, you're more educated in selecting what could work best for your team. And at the end of the day, it's something that you're gonna be you know, passionate about using, you're going to be really excited about using and that it's going to be robust enough for you to build a career on it. Or maybe you want to develop the next, you know, Beat Saber game, then, you know, understanding some of these are going to build the core fundamentals in order for you to build that long-term vision. The next one is going to be, make sure that you're shipping things that you're building. Even maybe at the beginning of the prototypes, you might not see the value there, but as you learn and keep growing your skills, you may want to ship that. If you're using VR, you can do that in SideQuest. If you're using you know, Oculus specific experiences, maybe you wanna put it in App Lab first and then in SideQuest. Or if you're using a mobile device such as the iPhone and you wanna put an AR kit experience that you built into the Apple Store, then you can do that. The same thing with Google Play if you're using Android. I really recommend going through that process. The, the reason for that is because through that process, you're gonna have to package your application, you're gonna have to optimize it, maybe the application is too big, maybe the application is not really you know, behaving or has the frame rate that you're looking for when you deploy it. So going through this process is gonna teach you to, you know, from the idea to the prototyping phases, to the creativity, to actually launching, and you're going to be involved in that, that entire process, it's gonna teach you a lot. Next one is, I want you to understand the differences between augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, mixed reality, the metaverse. Then, you know, there's a lot of talk about the metaverse right now. There's a lot of talk about XR, but people a lot of times don't understand what they mean. Some people might say, oh, the metaverse, and they think, you know, about what Meta is pushing as their vision of the Metaverse. But maybe, you know, the vision of the Metaverse is how Unity CEO is actually describing it, which I'm gonna be putting right above me. Or maybe the vision of the Metaverse is what you think it should be today and people just trying to figure it out. But understand all of those differences because when you're coming to an interview and I ask you, okay, what are the differences between all of these? What are you, th what are you thinking about the Metaverse? How do you see that? 
uh, what are some use cases for AR versus VR? I think understanding the theory, the core, you know, fundamentals is really important for you in order for you to become a great XR developer or designer. The last one that I that I really think is really important is building a portfolio. This goes, you know, in tangent with, you know, prototyping. I think prototyping is great and I think everybody should do it. But not only that, take that prototyping into, uh, you know, a GitHub repo where, you know, maybe today you're implementing a new mechanic. Maybe you want to, you know, maybe you want to grab an item with your hand or maybe with two hands and you want to add some constraints. Maybe you want to spray something and, and implement it with Interaction SDK. Maybe you want to show a video in extended reality. Maybe one of them is going to be monoscopic versus stereoscopic. I think all of those things that you're learning, make sure that you're committing those and pushing to GitHub because anytime I get a new person coming in and, and trying to tell me what they work on, I, I like the people that say, Dilmer, this is where I work on. Go to GitHub, check out my repos versus somebody that just say, oh yeah, I just learned it. And, but I don't have anything to show. So make sure that you're putting everything in GitHub or GitLab or your own website and building a portfolio. As a takeaway, make sure that whatever, you know, somebody asks you in an interview, even if you don't know it, that you're gonna be the type of person that is gonna say, okay, you know what, Dilmer, I don't know the answer, but I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna email you back what I think it should be. Or if you get the job and you don't know something, that you're gonna be the person that is going to, you know, be researching and understanding and learning and at the end of the day, you got to be passionate about it, right? Just don't take the job just because you're going to make money. I mean, money is important, but you need to be passionate. And that is, I think, that is what fills me up today. I am passionate about this. I am passionate about teaching. So I'm going to keep doing this for a long time. In the same way for you, if you want to become a great XR developer that is learning every day, make sure you make this a lifestyle and not just something that you do from a specific hour of the day and then that's it. I think it should be something that you're super passionate about. So that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much.